What's going on, everyone? Here's part two of our conversation with JC from Pop Punk Pokemon, where we cover all the news from last week, and we jump right into our conversation about the trainer tips and Mystic 7 Madness. Enjoy. Let me let me start breaking into the into the core of the news here because we're we're going long and dude, uh, like I said, man, we 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 could go for fucking hours and which is awesome. It's good vibe, man. But Make I, I want to run through this shit real happening. quick. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because this is already kind of coming gone. So we wake up this morning, trainer tips and Mystic Seven channels completely offline, yeah. nothing there. Accounts completely suspended by YouTube. I started this with reversal last week where we feature a different YouTuber. And uh, to kind of who has delivered some really good, you know, compelling content on a specific news subject. So I want to talk about Poke AK came out with a video kind of talking about what had happened with Trainer Tips and Mystic 7. I listened to it right before this podcast, actually. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, I know a lot of people are mad. I'm the first thing I do when I get aggravated is I try to take a deep breath, put down my torch, put down my pitchfork and try and figure out the logical side of this because I'm aggravated, too, because these are two content. These are two content creators that are. A level, professional as fuck, and just get shit done in the in the best right. kind of way. All right, so there's there's no way that they a broke the contracts, broke terms of service. There's no way. So it has to be a bot problem or an attack. Now, according yeah. to everything that they've shared on their social medias through Mystic Seven's Instagram stories and through Trainer Tips's screen caps of uh, emails and Mystic Seven's screen caps of emails all via Twitter. Uh, it seems as though bots went crazy and attacked the letters CP. Yep. Because in certain forms of the internet, it stands for something else. And just like Poke AK, my buddy Matt, I'm not going to, you know, go on about what that means. If you know what it means, you know what it means. Um, but in our game, it means combat power. Um, so bots attacked. And I, I think it was a bot attack. Now, it's very easy to jump on the train and say, oh, this creator did it. These people attacked him. And maybe so. But I don't know. Without I due don't process. What you're talking about. So, uh, you need to so look. So CP is child porn. Yeah. So, oh, so oh, the, it, it's, oh. but now this is the thing, though. <gasps> CP has been used in the title of fucking countless videos. Yeah. Countless, countless videos. And I, it makes complete sense how algorithmically some someone's going to pick up on that. Exactly. There might be a, another combination of characters in that title that also set off a trigger of some kind of flag. I mean, there's a whole bunch of shit. And again, this is this is not a human. This is potentially not a human's keystroke yep. of, okay, you know, delete. You know, this is something that just happened. It triggered three immediate back-to-back-to-back strikes, all this shit, and boom, done, yep, it happened. terminated. But the thing is, is if it was a targeted attack, it will tell you who flagged your video. It will tell you. So if your really? video was if your video was flagged, it will say who flagged it and for what reason. Well, because I've been hit for like audio content, like music and stuff, and then I'll get a notification like saying, "Hey, tell you this why. person has you know, you know that that makes sense." But I don't know, man. This is just so weird that at the same time, I think what happened. Two YouTubers in the same space. This is just my perspective on it. I think because the algorithm is favoring both those creators right now because they're both top tier platform, um, top tier creators on the platform. Because the algorithm is favoring them, the bots are as well. Therefore, the spotlight is on them a lot more accurately, or what they assume is accurately via the code, that it's a lot easier for them to get taken down than for smaller creators. And it's harder for them to find because they're not as popular. I think that's well, how Well, let's just hope that that's. The case, it's, and it's not someone actually trying to be malicious. I know and it's easy to jump on the train, their and I, I just, in my experience, if you play the if then blame game, it just it never leads to anything good. I believe in due process, and I, I think that even though I do not agree with those other content creators that are being blamed for this attack, I do not like them or care for them at all, or or support or respect anything. That they're oh, doing. I don't, I don't even know that. I don't even know yeah. this part of the story. You know, I was just thinking like, <laughs> like Jono secretly, 
secretly, seriously, <laughs> like nope, he dropped out of the fucking scene no, it, and it, like he's into you, like I, the hacking and shit like that. So, you know. Look, I, I appreciate your perspective because that fucking humbles me and that grounds me because I'm typically that fucking I know, asshole Ken's ready to go and yeah, grab the torch like, and pit for it and go for it. Yeah. Fucking Jersey, son. Yeah. You know, but look, no, it's you, that makes a lot of sense. But hey, at the end of the day, both their channels are back. They yes. lost the day of and revenue, it, which is fucking significant. That's a that lot is of a fucking huge deal. activity. And not just that, this is going to hurt them algorithmically because now they just lost a day's worth of momentum, a day's worth of views, a day's worth of their videos that were climbing up are now dropping down. Yep. And they're going to have to make that up. And that fucking sucks. You know, that's really shitty. So this was a very bizarre situation. End of the day, both their channels are back up. Thank God. I like, I, I watch both of those channels religiously. So it's like, you know, likewise. I they're some of my favorite creators, and yeah, I've had the privilege no. of meeting both of them. I met Mystic Seven, uh, Brandon in Hawaii, and I, I met um, Trainer Tips Nick in in Long Beach uh, for one of his EX raids. They're both wonderful guys, uh, super stand up dudes, and really really great. Uh, they inspire me and, and made me want to start creating content on YouTube. Um, so nothing but nothing but well wishes to them. It does suck, but here's the thing. Here's the thing I kind of remember in the back of my mind. If it was a targeted attack, if it was somebody who did it on purpose, they're not done. They'll, they'll show no, themselves they'll again. again. They'll do so, it again. Yep. Yeah. And then that will prove it. But for now... We'll blame the bots. Blame the bots. For now, we blame the bots. I blame wow. Skynet. Until somebody else... <laughs> it was probably SpoofBot 2020. But <laughs> what's, what, what really sucks about it is that there are content creators out there that are, are on their platforms and singing praises and being really excited about them being taken down. And I think that that's a Isn't shame. Isn't that crazy? I think that's, that's some what? bullshit. What? Really? Yeah, old yeah old. that's well, messed now up. Now it's my time to shine. Well, you know, you, know, it's you like, got some on. hungry people out there that, that's you know, bullshit. they're hungry and they're thirsty and they don't know how to get it on their own. So yep. they got to step on other people's faces. I think All that's right. a shame. I want to talk about love. Well, let's talk about love now. Let's talk about uh, Valentine's Day. It was Valentine's Day. We're, we're, we're in the Valentine's Day event right now. I'm gonna I rip, love it. I'm going to fucking I'm rip so through happy. this. It goes through the 21st. So you got some time on this still. Pink yep. Pokemon are back. Clefairy Hop if love this slow book. Jigglypuff, Lickitung, Execute, Skitty, Snubble, Wizard. All that shit. Increased spawns of regionals. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I've seen plenty of Tauros. I've seen Lunatone, Illumise. I've seen plenty of that shit. In 7K hatches, Happiny, Shiny Cleffa, Shiny Smoochum, Chansey and Porygon are in raids. Lures last six hours. There's double catch candy. There's new research. Make five great curveball throws for Spinda number nine. This is the uh, heart shaped eyeball. Yeah, that's going to... Melissa's got two of them. I'm never going to fucking get it ever in my life, bro. I never... I did three in a row. Like, I had three stacked up and was ready to... Can I flex a little bit on this event? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, I've already caught about ten of those heart uh, pandas. You suck. Wow. I'm pretty pretty good at doing the great throws. But here's the thing. You have to target the right Pokemon. If you That's what he slow says. Poke. I don't play enough. You want I don't slow know. poke. I don't you want enough, love so disc. Like... You want Whalmer. You want Venonat. Venonat's good. Um, raid bosses. Is a great bosses. one. Raid bosses are the easiest ones. If exactly. You're doing raid. Exactly. So, but the thing is, is I'm a stoner, so <laughs> I like do one and then I forget that I have the streak going, and I'm like, "Fuck!" I'll see something cute. Well, there that's because be like, you oh curve, God, I want get that. the great ball, that. Boop, and you're no! like. That's like an auto catch. Someone help her out. Someone do it for you. So I, yeah, I've got no, about never. ten of those little no, bears. She'll have that shit forever. No, I'll just fucking keep it forever. <laughs> I'll just never get it done, and I'll just eat it. And All right, I, Adam, run us through the new raid bosses. Oh god. Well, hold on. Let me just back up for two seconds. I hatched a happeny, but didn't see it. Oh, I How got to get as the deck well. sentry. What? I just opened up my game and I saw it. Like I went into my Pokemon and it was there, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" So I missed it. I had a whole bunch of 10k eggs saved up too, and literally I got like four Mareep and like three Trapinch. I got three. I, was, I got three Dratini, including a shiny Dratini. Egg. I saw oh, that's that. Up. Congrats. That's yeah. lucky. Okay, so the raid bosses, the power of love. We've got Ponyta, Krabby, Snubble, Love Disc, and Shinx, and they all can be shiny. That's a that's awesome tier one. Yeah. And then tier an two, awesome tier we've one. got Slowbro, Electrode, Lickitung, Magmar, and Curlia. Not too exciting there. And in tier three, we have Ninetales, Chansey, Porygon, Flaffy, and Miltank. Damn Chansey, bro. (laughs) Chansey's a huge deal. So now people have a chance to get I mean, plus the 20 love discs. If you catch 20 love discs, you can get a Chansey as well, which, fun fact, I completed my first catch 20 love discs, and I got a perfect Chansey. 
That's so nice. funny. Whoa. Nice. That's awesome. Hondo I've had crazy. one from a hatch oh, a long time and ago. On, on a random note, too, not, not that it's that common, but I heard that Finneon also counts as a love disc in that quest. So really? if you need, yeah, so if you need to catch 20, the catch 20 love disc quest, Finneon will count towards that. I don't know why, but someone showed me. They That's had video of it. Interesting. So. Uh, yep. Yeah, there he is. 537. <sighs> Perfect. Love you got to make 20. that a big fat blissy, man. Yep. Yeah, I know. No. My blissy's maxed out, ready to go. No. Leave it as Chansey. I, I think I'm going to leave it as a Chansey. <laughs> I gym a lot. So, like, I think in the gym game, uh, perfect maxed out Chansey is a little more valuable long term than a maxed out blissy. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, what about tier four? Tier four, we got Typhlosion, Togetic, Tyranitar, and Absol. Absol being the only thing that can be shiny. And in tier five, we have Palkia. And attack right. form Deoxys still. So I really like tier one. I kind of like Electrode in tier two, Chansey in tier three. Togetic is good because now um, this kind of is going to roll into the next thing I wanted to talk about through Swine Up Community Day was the introduction of stat modifying moves into the game. It's happening. It's live. This is the real freaking deal. And it's slowly rolling out. My belief is that this is going to be a slow rollout. I think it was like three episodes ago. I played the little audio clips of, you know, the sounds of, you know, attack rising, defense rising, you know, that kind of stuff. We're starting to see that now. And through Swine Up Community Day, which was this past Saturday, it was uh, today in Asia, uh, we had Triple Catch Stardust. Uh, spawns seemed to be way the hell up for Community Day. I don't know if you guys saw like a stupid amount, but there was people in our Discord that were were seeing, you know, six and 700 Swine Up and catching like five and six hundred, which is absolutely insane, which is like a serious legit grind. Sense. I'm telling you, man. It doesn't make sense. Like, how is that fucking possible to catch that many fucking Pokemon in such a short amount of they're time? They're like the like Ivan Drago of Pokemon Go. It's just like well, they got the Go Plus catching and they're catching. That's I crazy. think it's a That's combination insanity. of fast catching and go plusing. Honestly, yeah. like even when I was in the grind phases of getting to level four, like road to level forty. If you just go plus things in a place that has a lot of lures and stops, like it's just it's faster to just go plus things because the time it takes for you to catch it with a regular ball versus it throwing and failing is more yep. efficient to just throw a pokeball, throw a pokeball, throw a yep. pokeball, and if it misses, whatever, just catch. But I sadly didn't even get to play for community day. Um, not not actually. I, I had my Go Plus going at work all the entire event. <laughs> so I didn't see any of my catches until my shift ended at exactly 2 o'clock, which is when it ended on the West Coast. So when I'm going through my feed, I, I had like, like 185 empty slots. Every one of them was full, and I had four shinies. One of them was a 96. Wow. wow. That's awesome. So That's awesome. Go Plus for the win. Yep, we had the 10 Sinnoh Stones guaranteed, five from Gym Leader Battles, five from PvP. That was fantastic. That was they so finally awesome. put out some good communication that clarified this, saying, like, you know, you can do this exactly from these hours. It doesn't have to be during the window. They finally cleared that up on social media. Thank you, Niantic. Mammoth Swine is available. It actually became available in game the day before. It wouldn't get the Ancient Power move, which is one of these moves that was stat, you know, stat bending, but you could get Mammoth Swine a day early. I didn't give a shit because I want Mamoswine as a ice attacker. It will be the number one counter for Rayquaza when Rayquaza comes back. There was no Community Day box in the store, which I didn't yeah, miss at all I because I've never bought one of them. Out. I didn't. You miss buy that. those things? Well, I, I just wanted to see what it was compared to the boxes that it we was a had. box of doo doo stuff you don't want at full price. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I needed incense, so I literally bought yeah. incense because I was stuck at work, mm. and right, I wanted I the incense to go plus, and you know, I want to talk about you. ancient power. And I want to do this as part of our PvP update. All right, so stat boosting moves are here. They are in the game. As of right now, there is three moves. Ancient Power, Ominous Wind, a ghost move, and Silver Wind, a bug move. I'll link to a, uh, a site that will show. GoHub actually put a, together an infographic that shows all the Pokemon that can learn these moves. And all three of these moves have these same exact stats and the same exact potential effect. It will raise the attack and defense of the user. So it doesn't affect the person you're attacking, it affects the user. So the user will actually get the buff here. Now, the data is still coming in. Pokemon Go Hub thinks it's about a 10% chance for you to trigger a stat move. And it's inconclusive data it so far. It didn't fucking work for me. You, yeah, you, I, I did you watch did Trainer experiment. Tips video on it. 
Yeah. And Trainer Chips has a really good video that kind of explains it. It's but just it's explains probability it, pretty well. It's, it talks. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But this is going to be huge when this rolls out in the future with more moves and we start to see more types get these kind of moves. I think it's really going to shake things up. And this makes sense of why they broke out the, the moves on the Pokemon screen where you would see the moves for PvP and the moves for gyms and raids. Because now, if there's a stat-modifying move, it's highlighted on that screen. So it, it makes more sense that they broke it out, because now you're going to be able to see that benefit only on the PvP side, and not like where a weather boost would be on your normal attacks. So it, it made more sense the way, they, the way they did that. But I'm very excited for this. I think it's going to be lead to exceptional depth in the game. I, ho I hosted two Twilight Cups today. Uh, Ancient Power was used a lot. Ominous Wind was used, you know, so there's definitely uh, a place for it, and people are already starting to pick up on it, and I can't wait to see where this goes, because I think it's just going to lead to a much more deeper and fulfilling PvP experience at large. All right, I want to jump into a couple listener emails. I had to bump them from the show last week because we ran long with Reversal, uh, but we did get a couple emails. Let me go through them real quick. So this is from someone named Kenny, and he brings up a point that we really haven't talked about in a long time. He says, Niantic is putting all this information on the cards... But one thing I wish they would put on, and they could take the rest of the crap off as far as I care, is how many battles and raids that a, po a Pokemon has won, instead of just seeing it when you're in the gym screen. So, you know how, like, when you're in the gym screen, you can actually see the statistics, hey, 300 battles won. Like, why do they hide data from us? Why do they yeah. hide information? Like, I want to know. All the time. All the time. Yeah, you like, know let I mean? me click on my Pokemon and get all that bitch's stats. I yeah, would love like, to that's, see that. It's a, Kenny, great point. We, we used to talk about that shit a lot. We brought it up a bunch of times, and... It definitely reminded me, like, yeah, why don't they give us that information? Because it's clearly there. It's clearly being saved somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Just like give us access to it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they're 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 still the Niantic machine of mind controlling us over the next couple of years. It's in the plan somewhere. Like year four, give them battle stats. Beep beep. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I keep I honestly them, thought something like. In. This this photo update that's about to come, I didn't think that was going to come for like another year. I had like made my peace with it and like accepted that it wasn't coming for a while. The fact that it's coming this fast is, I am so stoked about it, dude. Yeah. It'll be out tomorrow. <sighs> I really I hope so. It'll be out I tomorrow. Hope so. If if it's it is, you here. will see me just screaming on Facebook, yes. or on Instagram Live, and on Twitter. I will just be that's awesome going bananas. Well, the, well, the shit thing is, is like if it does go live tomorrow, it'll be at one p.m. West Coast time. So, Pacific, right. Yeah. That means I only have an hour to play with it before I have to be at work. Oh, wow. your belly's going to hurt tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, oh, man. Uh, I'm going to have All to right. get shit going. <laughs> Pidgey Grab has sent us an email, and uh, this is the email that we had to bump from uh, the show last week. He was talking about the conversation we had about Pokemon Go uh, viability as an eSport and he brought up a really good point. He goes, have you ever seen the rock, paper, scissors matches online? It's intense for real. I, honestly, I have. It is fucking intense. It's awesome. <laughs> so anything could be exciting if it's all about the user, right? So that that was a that was his first great point. Dude, no, I, absolutely. Says, really great point. And I loved your US insight on it about, like, if imagine, like, an arena where everyone's wearing goggles. Yeah. Like, when you were going on about this, I was like, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I love that, please. <laughs> and dude, before our battle party, I'll get more into that. There's something else I want to I want to bring up, but in Pidgey grab his email, he says the next level after the wearable glasses is a 5D theater, oh and God. I've experienced this yeah. before. I have he not. goes at Universal Studios. There's a 5D movie. The seats will vibrate, giggity, wind, uh, <laughs> water, the whole nine yards. Picture he goes. Picture sitting in a stadium where all those things you mentioned on your show, the glasses, players, their phones, the projected AR. A trainer, a trainer A plays Articuno, trainer B plays Zapdos. For the charge move, the stadium gets a blast of cool air or sparks, like from, you know, from mm -hmm. a safe distance. Oh my God. Or something like that. that I mean, that would be fucking awesome as a ride, as an, like, and as an attraction, but I can't see it happening as in a long term. But like, it could be like a stage event. show. It could be, a, it could be like ah, a traveling see. fucking circus. <laughs> maybe. Hey, maybe the hey, technology I mean, will catch up faster than we think, man. Yep. And like then, a tour of it. Exactly, exactly. I see something like, like a road that. show. Yeah. Like yep. the Safari Zone. Yeah. We'll just have so a battle dope. at the Safari Zone. 
or like a mall tour. You know what I mean? <laughs> something, something. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, and then Pitcher Grab has sent in another email uh, this week saying, I think those community day art pieces you guys do would be a great Easter egg to leave at real life gyms with your card and information on the back. Oh. If you get it to a listener, have them spread it around to uh, their town and who knows. That's a great point, Pidgey Grava. Yes. And this has inspired me. Now, when we went to GoFest last year, Adam did this great thing where he took a stack of Pokemon cards, sleeved them up, tucked in our business card, and we that's how we gave them out to people. That's how we were promoting. We would leave them at you know gyms. We would just leave them around. If we saw a Ray group, people walking by in the street holding their phone, we would just kind of like give it to them like a flyer. You know what I mean? That's and a really a Pokemon fucking card. You're not going to throw it away. Yeah. You're going right, to be like, oh shit, a Pokemon card. Who and cares would, about Pokemon and would throw away a card? Come on. But they would pull it out and then giggity, and then they would say like, <laughs> you know, oh, I got this. I got that. What'd you get? Like, I remember like we met the verified level 40 club and when we gave them everyone, it was like the conversation starter and it was like all of a sudden we were all hanging out and having a good time and we were all just bullshitting. It was, it was really cool. Wait, so were you guys at that this- pizza party? Yeah, the Silk Road party. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah, there. Hell yeah, that's so weird. I dude. was I hanging out with Sinbad. We were playing the air hockey with Sinbad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I play you in air hockey? <laughs> <laughs> I have to now. now I have, we to, have go to go look, look at look the photos. Pictures. Yeah, I swear oh to God, goodness. I'm I destroyed <laughs> everyone in air hockey that night. Oh my! I was God, undefeated dude, that night in the air hockey. Did I? Did I meet you guys? Did that happen? No, that'd be so funny. Possibly. I was. I had many beers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she lost her phone. That was when Melissa. It was when we were playing air hockey. Is when Melissa went to the bathroom, lost her phone, and then had it lost for an hour. Didn't realize it, and then we found it. Someone mm-hmm. turned it into the bar again. The power of Pokemon. Dude. That's what we I held think it's it back. I had then. the Squirtle Squad sticker on the back of my old yep. case. Carrie Tastic hooked us up with Squirtle Squad mm-hmm. stickers. That's it was like up. this is a Pokemon player's phone. Got to play this shit forward and fucking turned it into the bar. It was it was amazing. Dude, please go anyway. through those photos because if we have already met. This is going to That's be hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> so yes. funny. But Pidgey Grab, this has Small inspired world. me, and I'm going to be starting this up pretty soon. Uh, I want to develop a street team for us. So if you, anyone's out there in their communities and wants to get involved with helping spread the gospel of Lured Up, let me know, and I will put together a promo kit for you with some of Adam's Perlers and some business cards and some Pokemon cards that are sleeved up, and you guys can just fucking distribute them as you like in your area. I would love that. So if anyone wants to get involved and is willing to, to take part in that, shoot me a DM. Well. And I'll send you a, uh, I'll send you a little promo kit, and you can, uh, you know, do do what you want with it, unless you're Terry Wolf, because I don't trust what yeah. you do with it. So, <laughs> so I know he'd be like, Terry Wolf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Digital Street Team too, man. Other yeah, creators. Yeah. So, so one of the things with my background in music was, you know, I was in bands and all that good stuff, mm-hmm. but I worked for a record label doing A and R. And I was running Street Team shit from back in the day before the world went digital. So I was the guy like, you know, finding you were the DIY the, the, guy the wall in New York City that said post no bills and I'm plastering, you know, posters up like that was me. Guerrilla tactics like on the street. You Bridges, know, doing tunnels, benches, posts, poles. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Mel- <laughs> Melissa and I used to work at the tunnel in New York Lots City. We had a big ass guest list at the tunnel, the nightclub. I have been there many times. Melissa did all the work. I just partied. I um, love the tunnel. But- <laughs> That's a great room. Yeah, I did the work. He reaped the benefits. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. So I, I've got a lot of experience with that, and I understand the value of it. So Pidgey Grab, you definitely inspired me. If you want to be involved with our street team, let us know. I'll start hooking it up. I'm going to build out a website landing page for it uh, with a contact form. So if you're interested, just check out our website, luredup.com. All right, a couple voicemails I want to get into really quick. Fucking Terry Wolf was so mad oh God, that we bro. didn't play his voicemail last week because he's like, this fucking guy, he asked for voicemails and then he doesn't even fucking play them. So, but it was a special show, Ter. Yeah, it was. It was. So here we go. I'm that doesn't play. mean this, spe- yeah. this one's not special. This one's special too. Well, we look, we were, ba- we had to like respectful. way over. So. It was 3 a.m. reversal time. So we oh, had that's to right. like yeah, that was be a, very that's respectful. Like an eight. <laughs> well, from you guys, it's like, what, seven hours? I forget what the time difference is from East Coast to there. I don't know. It's like six or seven, depending on daylight savings. Nine nine p.m. was three a.m. or something like that. His time. That sounds about right. Yeah, four. That's seven hours. Yeah, something like that. But uh, yeah, so we had we had to like keep it keep it neat and tidy. Um, But let's let's listen to Terry Wolf's voicemail. Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Come, Justin, get back in the cage. It puts the lotion on the center. It gets the hose. 
And by the way, Ken, this is a way, way long intro to get into a fucking voicemail. Terry Wolf, thank you so much. You can put your lotion on my skin oh whenever my God, you bro, like. You're such an animal. <laughs> so gross. Seriously, I just love you guys. <laughs> fucking internet channel. Bro, the fucking community. So, so, you know, Terry and I were, were going back and forth on uh, in DM today because we were sharing some stuff that no. even the internet channel no. on our Discord wouldn't be ready for. No, no, I had to curb that shit. And that's a no. that's a scary place. Yeah. If you like scroll this, up and look at some of that stuff, you're like, He sends oh, me man. a picture. He's like, you got to show this to Melissa. I'm like, she'll fucking throw up. And then I showed it to her. She was like, her mouth was on the fucking ground. She didn't even know what I, to it do. It took me a while <laughs> to pick my jaw back up. All right, another voicemail. This one from Ken Kniff from, from Connecticut. Connecticut. Hey, Lord up. This is Ken, Kenneth Kniff, Connecticut. I just wanted to say that you guys are awesome. And eat my ass. Because, you know, it melts in the ass, not in the mouth. So get that golden raspberry. Yeah. So I love the first Eminem album when it came out. The Marshall Mathers EP. That's a classic. And my name being Ken, Ken Kniff has come with me for years and years and years, and I've used that forever. So the fact that this person mentioned Ken Kniff from Connecticut is fucking great. <laughs> and yes. um, again, the eat my ass thing <laughs> and the golden raspberry thing. I can't. I'm sorry. I tried to I tried to prevent this conversation. Melissa, I'm in your camp. I'm in your camp. I, I really did. And you guys know me. Like it's not like me to just so, you know. This, this was another one of our Discord channel conversations oh. at 3 a.m. I'll leave it at that. So I don't know who this message is from, but it was clearly someone from our just Discord. Thank you. So thank great. You for it. And now to bring things back to, to the ground level, we have a great message from Adam from New Zealand who wanted to follow up on our multi accounting conversation that we had based on the Zoe Two Dots video. Hey, hey, Adam from New Zealand here. Thought I'd send you a voice message since you were asking for it. Uh, I just want to add to the multi accounting, I guess, debate. I just want to say that the biggest load of crap about it at all is that it's even in the terms of service. Because uh, even if Niantic had a way to detect it, which would be what, nearly impossible, I suppose? Um, would they even care? Uh, I don't think so, because if you think about it, they'd be losing a lot of uh, money if they banned all those accounts. Think of all the raid passes alone, not including, you know, just boxes or anything, uh, or even just outfits or whatever on those second, third, fourth accounts. So I thought I'd just toss that in there. Peace out from New Zealand, or Mordor, I suppose. So Adam, I'm with you now. Yeah, because they're, they're making money. You know, that's at the end of the day, that's what they want to do. You know, it's like like Justin's account, like he's doing the one a day. These these other multi accounts, they're not doing one a day. They're doing 40, 50. They're doing a hundred. You know, like so these are these are each each device is a revenue stream. So there's there's ups and downs and pros and cons and all that shit. But again, if your intent isn't bad, look, fucking do you make the game better. Couple pizzas. pizzas? Couple pizzas. Who's delivering? Yo, is this DiGiorno? I'll, I'll take a pop punk pizza party right now. I'm into it. <laughs> Give me some. A <laughs> couple pieces of miscellaneous news I want to talk about before we get into our Wait, battle party. Wait, before you jump into that, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there because it's true. Pineapple goes on pizza. No! Oh, yes, yes. Why? What? Pineapple on pizza is I'm fantastic. I'm just going to pretend like you just did not ever all say that. All right, talk that. about this miss news quick. No. quick. It does. Quick. Good thing you're on Mystic. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more thing I want to talk about here. This kind of comes off. So the other day, I was taking advantage of the six-hour lures, right? I, I had the morning off. Melissa kicked me out of the house. I was like, what am I going to do with my morning? I was like, I'm going to go to fucking Red Bank. I'm going to grind. I'm going to play. I'm going to restock. And I dropped 40 lures in Red Bank. I lured How up many the dollars? Entire f- and, and I covered the whole fucking town, painted the town up. R- and Red Bank, you say, huh? Red Bank, yep. S- and- Snooty. Booties. Snooch to the nooch, my brother nooch. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was amazing because I it it totally transformed Red Bank. And before I knew it, the discords were popping off going, fucking Red Bank is lit up. It was like it was like the beacons are lit, the beacons are lit. <laughs> God, no calls for aid. It was like literally people started coming out of the woodwork. And then I'm getting like these DMs like, yo, you fucking lit it up. Thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. Because there's six hour lures that yeah, last yeah, all yeah, fucking yeah. day. 
I only played for three and a half hours. I had to go to work. So when I left, the lures were still burning for another two and a half, three hours. It was awesome. So it got me thinking. A great contest that we could do on the show that I want to start today is I want to throw your community a lure party. And this is how you're going to enter. You're going to send me a picture of a dry ass neighborhood of some unlit poker stops. I want to see your grinding spots, but I want to see how many stops you guys have where you play. And if you win the contest, which will will be drawn at random on a monthly basis, we'll send you the necessary credit to lure up your entire fucking neighborhood and give your your town a three hour lure party. So that's what we're going to be doing every month here on the show. Email us info at lured up dot com. Hit us on social media. Show us your grind spots. Show us where you guys are playing. And every month we're going to have a winner and I will make sure that you guys have a lure party in your and then send us a picture. And then you got to send us a or picture. multiple pictures. Let us know that they are you that are on each of those stops. Yeah. And that, you know, <laughs> because I think that this is a fantastic way to draw players out, bring people together in a non event setting. And I think the organic basis, the organic foundation of getting people together to play this game in a non raid, you know, mentality is huge. So I want to bring that back to the game. I want to bring back the grind. I want to bring back people just getting out there and being on the feet on foot. So lure party contest, send us a picture of your lure, of of your poker stops and I'll fucking make a party. 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 Whoop, whoop. You guys can get pizza with pineapple on it after you uh after you oh. grind. I love that idea, man. I think that's that awesome. Great, that helps out free to play players, that helps out kids, you know. Sure. Parents who don't want to spend uh, too much money on a game, but the kids want to go out and play that kind of thing. Like, I, I mm-hmm. love that. That's so awesome. Hell I, yeah. so, I used to know businesses so know. that would do that. They would do a lore party at their business. You know, When the game first came out, I knew bars and stuff that would get like dollar off if your team missed it or like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, stuff yeah. like that. Oh, like, man. Bringing Jeez. that vibe back. The extra I think dollar is fantastic. for instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the cool things that the Philly scene, when Holly lived in Philly, uh, one of the really cool things that they would do on a regular basis was they would do scavenger hunts. Yeah. So they would put together a map. They'd have, you know, different tokens that they would leave, almost like a geocaching scenario where they would leave things around. Uh, and then, you know, the person that would find a certain amount of things, you go back to the base and, you know, tally everything up and they give out prizes. This is something I want to do. And I think that this could be a good opportunity for you to do some cool creative events and uh, we'll fund it. So that that's really what it comes down to, because. This shit's expensive, you know, and, 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 you know, spending money on the game for some is, is taboo. And it's also, you know, it's not something that's easy to do for a lot of people. So we'll make it happen for you, but you got to send us the pictures info at luredup.com. Hit us up on social media. Let's see those blue Pokestops and I will make them petally pink with beautiful pink petals flowing. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's awesome. I had a question I posed on, on, on Twitter the other day and it actually ended up being okay. I was worried that the six-hour lures were going to screw up community day spawns and research because historically, if you dropped a lure prior to your community day window starting, it would prevent that stop from picking up the community day research and prevent specific spawns from potentially happening because the lure was active prior to the event spawns kicking in. Oh, wow. I didn't so, know that. That's, that's Yeah. So like, if you have a neighborhood that you usually play in where people drop lures, you want to make sure that... You know, if if it's a 30 minute lure and your community day starts at two o'clock after one thirty, don't drop a lure. You got to wait till two oh one or two o'clock, you know, so that way that the, it'll trigger the research. So we were concerned that six hour lures were going to kind of screw with this and it would be harder to kind of manage because the lures are lasting so freaking long. Uh, but they actually patched it so it did not affect spawns. It did not affect uh, the community day research from getting picked up on the thing. So I, the, hopefully this will continue going forward and we won't have to worry about this anymore. That's awesome. One more cool thing that Niantic did, again, we, we talk about Niantic being at the forefront of AR technology, at the forefront of pushing their real-world platform. They've partnered with a company called Media Ambition Tokyo, and they're going to be doing an event call, called Pokemon Go Observatory. Now, this is something where it's a collective, a media collective of artists bringing together digital art in multiple formats, and Niantic is going to be representing AR there, and they've partnered with them, and this is going to be uh, delivered through the Microsoft HoloLens. This is a wearable. Mm -hmm. So you go to this event, you put on the glasses, and you're now going to be completely immersed, and I have a feeling this is going to be taking advantage of the technology, persistent AR technology that Escher Reality brought in, where you're going to see that AR space occlusion, and you're going to be able to see Pokemon running in and out of the world 
with your naked eye, not having to look through a device because you're going to be having the glasses, the Microsoft HoloLens on. This could be fucking insane. This is fucking bananas. It's nuts. So there was a different Japanese event where they had the little speaker on your phone where they, they gave you and they would hear the Pokemon cries coming through the speaker. So it was like a play on AR like that. They also had like things that were giving off different scents. So you would have smells like if you were by uh, bushes where Butterfree was spawning and there would be bar- butterflies and the things would smell like, you know, fresh blossoms or something like that. So again, bringing all the senses together. And now they're doing this with the HoloLens. It's where it's fucking going is wearables. I'm telling you, give me my cybernetic fucking eyeball. Mm-hmm. Sign me up. I'm ready. I'm know, fucking ready. No, I'm not ready. I'm like, I, I just need a, a visor. I can't. I'll link to the website. Uh, you got, you're got. you going to have to translate it. It's completely in Japanese, but it's worth taking a look at because uh, who knows if we got to follow this on Instagram and, and see posts that come out of this event because it's probably going to be like nothing we've seen before. So they're, they're really pushing the platform forward. Um, it's called, they're calling it the uh, Pokemon Scope. So again, they're using observatory, which is a term that's in the canon of Pokemon has been used, you know, plenty in the main series games. And they're using Pokemon Scope. The Sylph Scope was, you know, a tool used in the game. So again, they're, 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 sounds like they're, they're really staying in world and staying in canon, which is really cool. The March Sylph Arena tournament has been announced. It's called the Tempest Cup. It'll be electric ice flying in ground. Uh, like I said, I did run two Twilight Cups today. I won't go into too much detail, but... They were plagued by technical issues on Silf Roadside. So it was not a good day for me running tournaments. We were able to do it. Uh, the last tournament I ran, we actually did paper and pencil style. I had built out a spreadsheet to keep track of all this shit anyway, because I'm anal as shit. So luckily, I had that spreadsheet pre-built that built out my Swiss brackets automatically that kept my point tally. So was, I had all it ready. Thank God. You know, I, I'm the type of guy that wears like a belt and suspenders. So <laughs> it was a good thing to have that document because... I was able to pull up the sheet and do the tournament, but that whole thing happened. Trowels, the famous data miner, found some significant stuff. Adam, I'm looking at you. An item no, I'm you not can changing purchase, my team. You can purchase at the mm-hmm. shop the team medallion, an item you can buy, and once a year, you can change your team affiliation. To the right team, which is Mystic. Mystic. No. Yeah. no. Yes. Mm-hmm. So this is super interesting because people have been talking about this for a long time, wanting this, not wanting it. Now, on Ingress side, the, there's two teams, and it is like a 25-75 split. It's way, way unbalanced. Here, it's kind of weird that this is coming, but because it's a consumable that you purchase, it makes sense of why they're releasing it. Because I have a feeling people are just going to fucking buy it. They might even regret changing their team. And then they're going to have to rebuy it the following year. Because it's once every 365 days you could use it. But it's called the Team Medallion. I'll link to the asset uh, that Trials posted up on Twitter. It looks pretty badass. Uh, and also, new loading screen is starting to come out on Android with Smeargle in the loading screen. Spoiler and, alert. And it looked like there was a Pokemon kind of like photo Photo bombing. Yeah, this picture, is this is something really, I kind of wanted really to talk cute. about because Trails also found a new thing that said photobomb in the code. So I'm wondering, it, uh, judging oh, by Smurgle. this image, you can photograph more than one Pokemon at a time. Mm-hmm. Is that a thing? Like that I, would be cool. Like or one is it Pokemon random? Like the, another one? Like the whoopsie guy from Mortal Kombat? You know? Or like the yeah. only like, way you can encounter <laughs> would it be random? No, what if what if what if what if Smurgle is like the only way you can encounter him is by taking a picture of another Pokemon? Oh. Like it comes as like a <gasps> maybe that's it, how they just use, utilize sketch. His sketch I'm gonna move. catch so many Adam. Smeargles then because well, all right, I do well, is that, take that would make sense. Like he forces you to have to take yeah. a picture. This is what I was thinking. The photo bomb mode. They show a, a trainer in the photo. Yeah, maybe that it can detect a human. In the Maybe. photo with your Pokemon. But there's two Pokemon. Will... Well, there's more than one Pokemon in the photo, but there's two main body Pokemon in this photo at Mr. Mime and Smeargle. Well, if mm-hmm. you remember the Pokemon Playground demo that came out a year ago, they showed three Pokemon in the same space. They had like a Charizard, a Pikachu, a Pikachu and an Eevee, Eevee, I believe. Yeah. So, you know, the, in the Playground mode, that was part of the feature was, yeah, you could drop multiple Pokemon into a persistent space. Holy shit. I'm so excited. If this is, I'm if so this excited. Is, oh my God. I'm going to need to do Nidorino versus Gengar then, if that's a thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Battle. Oh, I didn't so even think of Snorlax that. This Snorlax. is going to change everything. Snorlax, Eevee, tag team. Yeah. It's, oh, my it's God. Funny oh, I like, pulled um, one. 
The, you know, when when this first came out, the hype level on Twitter was insane, and I think I posted on Twitter like like this is exactly what we've been waiting for. You know, Melissa is really looking forward to this. Finally, she's so got a new way. I fucking egg. wanted. You don't understand. Like, for the fucking first year, you know, all you assholes had AR, and I couldn't fucking use it at all. On Android, yep. And then I finally get the fucking phone to do it, and now they're going to give me what I want. I'm, I'm psyched. Pumped, I play and take pictures I think it's going to be like game, absolute game changer. This is going to be like, I, I beat the game. Like, <laughs> I don't need to do any more quests. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't need to do anything else. This is all I'm going to be doing from here on out. I I agree but, because that's it's all I've been looking for. But is that's just playing with. That's them. the beauty of it, though, because it's like again, ju- it's just another way to engage with the game. Yep. Do play the game like you want. It's so individualized. That's what makes it so great. I love that about this game. That's one of my favorite things about this game is that you got your raiders, you got your grinders, you got your casuals, you got you know your lore party victims, your once a week guys. You know, like you've got your collectors, your shiny collectors. You've got your yeah. completed dexers. It's all different kinds of people who play this I'm game. I'm the deli birder. The deli birder. The deli birder. <laughs> the deli birder. <laughs> well, you know, I've been I've been running a living dex since the beginning. Likewise. So, yeah. So I'm I'm excited that I stuck true to that because I gave up on it a little bit with some evolution parties when I was desperate for for XP and now it's all back in place and it's like, yes. Yep. I I'm so decks. I'm so happy about that. I have at least one of everything. So now it's like literally Outside of the regionals, like I could document the entire Kanto decks in Go Snapshot, which is going to be a project of mine. So I'm so fucking excited about it. That's mine too. So I kind of cool. want to go through everything and just go through the line, start with Bulbasaur and just go. Yes, that's kind yes. of my aim. But I have my I have my niches for like what I want to do for a very specific Pokemon because I already have many ideas. But I Great. I do like the Great. idea of starting at Bulbasaur and just going. I think that's going to be really cool. You, you have plenty of faces to melt with your with mm-hmm. your stuff. Yeah. So I'm sure it'll be I'm sure it'll be awesome. All right. So reversal got off light last week. Ah oh, yeah. Because did. I forgot look, I I knew so that we mad. I knew we weren't going to do the battle party when when he had him on because we we had a, like a long interview section. But I was I wanted to get him to actually record a little bumper of him doing the battle party whoop whoop, and I forgot to I forgot to ask him. So next time we have him on, we're, we're getting it. Yeah. But Justin, we got you, bro. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to get in it's on the battle you, party. <laughs> okay, let me get in the you right headspace for it. You ready? I might peak the audio on this, so let me. Back <laughs> it's up okay. A little. It's okay. Can back it up. Wait, are we back. all gonna do it together? Are we gonna oh, let him? Take oh, it? he's taking it. Take it. Ready. Bro. Battle party, whoop whoop! Battle party, whoop whoop! <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Hell yeah! I want a awesome, goddamn man. t-shirt. <laughs> if well, I we got we got to make one t-shirt cannon. I would blast it. Do you need a graphic right designer? Now. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we know a guy. <laughs> Shameless self plug. All right, let's get into this battle party. We are going to talk about Typhlosion today. Now, Typhlosion is someone that you may not think is that important because it really only came into relevancy when it had Blast Burn, the Community Day move. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at it not from the perspective of, hey, we need this Pokemon to make it relevant and we need this Pokemon to fill our parties out, but I'm looking at it the way of we need new Pokemon to battle in raids and creative ways to do it. So that's the way I'm looking at it. So yes, I know this thing does not have Blast Burn. No, I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. So let's talk about it. Look, it could be duoed. So anytime, you know, we, we talked about the raids getting overall 6% harder than they were before. So soloing raids is exceptionally difficult. Tier 4 solos are pretty much a thing of the past. But duos are something that are very viable. So I like the fact that you're going to have challenging Pokemon that can be duoed. So this is a Pokemon you could do with one other person. It's a pure fire type, weak to ground, rock, and water. Uh, 100% catch is going to be 1,651 CP, boosted in sunny weather, 2,064 CP. So again, the two numbers you want to worry about, 1,651 and 2,064. Best counters, Kyogre, Waterfall, Hydro Pump. Oh yeah, by the way, this is coming, uh, credit is uh, to Pokebattler.com where I got this info. Kyogre, Waterfall, Hydro Pump. Rampardos, Smackdown, Rock Slide. I don't have one of these yet. Tyranitar, Smackdown, Stone Edge. Gyarados, Waterfall, Hydro Pump. Everyone's got that. Palkia, Dragon Tail, Hydro Pump. I love when you could take a Pokemon that you just caught and put it into rotation. And for Alligator with Waterfall, Hydro Cannon, the uh, community they move. Um, some budget counters, Rhyperior, Empoleon, Salamence, Almastar, Melodic, Kingdra. There's plenty. Not even Blastoise is on that list. Bruh. Why bring Blastoise when you could bring Gyarados? 
Why bring like, Gyarados? Like, if you're, you're not bring bringing alligator. Kyogre. Gyarados, bring Gyarados. Is, is tankier. And in some situations, Gyarados is tankier than Kyogre. Yeah. Yeah, depending, well, because you're getting flying, mm-hmm. you know, so depending on the, you know, the what you're trying to cover. So this is, I, I broke this out two ways. If I'm trying to duo this thing, I'm bringing three Kyogre, three Tyranitar, just because I've got, you know, stacked lineups from both of those Pokemon. I have 100% Kyogre. Um, th- that would be what I'm bringing. But if I'm, if I'm raiding this thing with a full party, I'm going to bring Kyogre, Tyranitar, Palkia, need a reason to use Palkia. Gyarados, I have a shiny one. Rhyperior and Solomons. Solomons, another badass looking Pokemon aesthetically that never really gets time to shine. So that's what I'm going to bring. Kyogre, Tyranitar, Palkia, Gyarados, Rhyperior, Solomons. Adam, what do you got? I'm going to bring four hundred percent Pokemon that I have. Uh, Gyarados, Feraligatr, Amistar, and Rhyperior. And then my Stone Edge, Rock Throw, Tyranitar, and Hydro Pump, Waterfall, Kyogre. All right, so no no Ky- doubles. Oh no doubles, that's good. And Melissa? I'm going to bring a couple of shinies, my shiny Gyarados and Feraligatr and Tyranitar and Palkia because an opportunity to use him and Kyogre just to round it out and Melodic because you never get to use that. Exactly. Good call. That's that's and exactly what I'm talking about. That's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty. And Justin, what do you got? Okay, easy, easy pick. Um, Rating is something I do a lot, and I always try to get the highest amount of balls possible, so I don't go for their aesthetic. I go for uh, most damage I could possibly do. So I'm going to bring in my uh, 98 Kyogre with uh, Waterfall Hydro Pump, and then I have five perfect maxed out Smackdown Stone Edge Tyranitars that are coming to back them up. Five? Dude, five hundred percent Tyranitar? That is insane. I don't care what raid I'm going against, even if it's completely off type, I'm bringing them. <laughs> that would be you so would. awesome. That's so cool, man. Now, see, I and I appreciate that because I usually go the easy way out and say I'm just going to bring my heavy hitters. But I I understand the perspective as a free to play player. You have to maximize your chances of catching the raid boss, yep. and to do that, you need the highest output to get that bonus of extra balls for highest output. It makes complete sense. So cool perspective. And the party lines up with that. So very, very fucking cool. That's going to wrap up the show. This is a good show. This was a good show, man. Yeah. This was a lot of fun, dude. This was so I much fun. so dude. much more so to much say. Today, dude. Yes. Thank you so much, dude, for coming on. Dude, no worries. Uh, Love your when, art. When are we doing this again? Yes, soon. Soon. As soon after uh After, after Go update. Snapshot. Yep. Yep. I'm in. Count me out. Hey, hey, and I, and I saw you made a cool picture for Ken with. Oh, yeah. I, I uh, where's never... my Snorlax? <laughs> um, I, I need it. You didn't reply to my DM. Also, I've never actually photographed uh, a Snorlax because I, I've only ever caught them at night. Mm. Wow. So Melissa too. With Melissa's Ghost Snapshot. Said that yeah, I caught two last night. night. I'm I'm pretty stoked about taking pictures of Snorlax because it's something that I never done. In fact, um, when I was uh, in in December, I did some traveling. I, I went to uh, Alaska, Hawaii, um, Pennsylvania, and Florida. But when I was in Florida, I um, I did encounter a wild Snorlax down the street from where I was staying, and we ran, 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 and I put it into AR mode to take the picture. But I was waiting for my friend to catch up. And while I was waiting for her, it timed out and, and whited out, and the entire thing was gone. So even when I tried to take a picture oh, at night, pain. it was in the middle of the Denied. night. It was like 9.30 or f- like something like that, like almost 10 o'clock at night on this random golf course. And, uh, yeah, we uh, stepped in some mud. Oh, there were some puddles. It was it was worth it, but I didn't even get the <laughs> damn photo. So, uh, so well, when Ghost Snapchat, Snapchat comes, will change that. <laughs> I, I will get you your Snorlax. All don't right. you worry. Because oh, I, you do it. I hope we can get him to lay down. Because if we do, I have oh, some paths for him yeah, to block. Yeah, I'm going to be taking lots of pictures of Deli Bird. Deli Bird? <laughs> That's all. Adam is so he focused, bro. It doesn't even matter. Did, like, you just whatever. See, did you see the post I just did? It could be any no. any feature comes no, out in the well, game. He's like, yeah, okay, Deli Bird but, but how can Deli Bird be uh, introduced into this? Like, that's all <laughs> I can't wait to about. take my shiny Deli Bird out and just like. I, I have it. one as well. And I'm, I was too scared to risk photographing it. So I only took a picture of a regular Deli Bird during that event. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to shoot the shiny Deli Bird as well. Awesome. All right. Well, Justin, plug away, man. Where where can our, our audience find you? Where do you want to direct them? Uh, lay it, let us have it. Okay. Uh, well, the easiest place for me to uh, to interact with you are Instagram and Twitter. Um, Instagram, the handle is at Pop Punk Pokemon YT for YouTube. Uh, the YouTube channel is called Pallet Town Passport. As soon as we get to 100 subs, we'll go ahead and get that 
proper URL. We're not quite Let's there Let's make yet. that happen, people. Let's make yep. that happen. Twitter is easy, at jcpix3, um, and I'm pretty responsive on that. If you follow me, you're just going to see a bunch of shit about Pokemon, uh, the Spice Girls, and me just swearing a lot. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's what they're going to come for? My that's Instagram feed reads like a 13-year-old girl's diary, so it's <laughs> pretty great. But the other thing I wanted to say is that Palatown Passport is a dedicated um, collaborative channel. It began with Kyler's idea and my collaboration I came up with a name that fit what he was going for, and then together we decided to make this thing together. Um, so the only videos that are up right now are mine, but that's just because uh, Kyler's been going through some stuff, and now he is back on board as of today. We're, I spoke to him We're very excited. Today. We're very, very excited. Kyler is a good, good friend. Um, we spent yeah, he's our GoFest last year with Kyler. I um, wish I had met awesome him then. content creator. Yeah. He actually yeah. came out to California not too long ago to to get level 40, and I joined him for that. I don't know if you saw that video, but I, I, I gave did. him the trade that made him level yep. 40 Pushed on the Santa Monica Pier. Yeah, I was pretty, pretty hyped for that. I still have that Alakazam he gave me, too. But yeah, Kyler I felt is, uh, bad, man. The dude's lactose intolerant. We made him eat Chicago pizza. <laughs> don't worry about it. My, my girlfriend is lactose intolerant, too, and we just deal with the consequences because I, there's no way we're cutting cheese out of our diet. I'm way too tired to do that. It's just not going to happen. But yeah, Kyler is uh, fantastic. He's back on board. So you're going to see a lot of interesting, diverse content being created for the channel. And uh, I'm excited to share more Pallet Town Passport That's coming awesome. at you. I can't awesome, wait, man. Can't Very wait cool. to can't wait to check it out. Thanks again so much for coming on. Everyone, please check out all the links in the description. I'll put links to all the places that you can find uh, Justin and what he's doing. Check out everything we're doing over at LuredUp.com. Email us, info at LuredUp.com. You can leave us a voicemail like so many people did this past week at 732-835-8639. Again, 732-835-8639. What Pause the show and more? call in now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just call. Call just us. Call. Yell at us. And you can send pictures, videos, all that stuff too. It's just like with Norton. Come right to my son's Google Voices on there. Please leave us a review on iTunes. Visit our Patreon. That's going to wrap up this week's show. Thank you guys so much for listening. And keep training, trainers. Bye. <laughs> Later. Bye. <laughs>